If I need to check audio on Twitch real quick. Most possibly. It takes about a minute. I need to start hitting this button way sooner. Way sooner. Testing, testing. I think we're good. Okay. 271. Oh, <clears throat> I didn't get the email yet. Usually I get the email. Like right as I start, I'm like, uh-oh, what's this email? Then I realize it's you. Okay, well, let's just start then. He'll come in. You ready? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> 271. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 271 here on the Security Podcast here on the N30 Network. My name is Hi. I'm Tom. Is not dying of the heat, but he's over there or there. Here, I survived. Yeah, but you had you had a secret weapon. Did you have a secret? You weapon. learned I... you learned from your Midwestern roots what to do. Yeah, yeah. When when it gets crazy hot outside, I treat your apartment like a server room or like a data center hot zones you have cold zones because your tiny little stand-up ac units they can't take the heat they gotta stay out of the kitchen literally your your kitchen should be a hot zone so what we did we we were literally blowing breakers it was crazy it got to like 109 uh here in in seattle suburbs uh where, where i'm currently based um and i've got a, a few of these stand-up ac units they're not amazing but they work well enough for for seattle weather it doesn't get super hot here at least it didn't uh, until this week which was awful so you gotta cordon off areas of your house and make hot zones and cold zones and uh it got bad enough that literally we could only run one ac because the others just literally could not take the volume of hot air that they were being faced with so we packed ourselves into one tiny room, had all of the fans and one AC going, and we did survive. It wasn't fun. I didn't enjoy it, but we made it. This is to say, in the winter, look around your town, look for um, air conditioners. People are moving to central air. They're giving them away. My neighbor, a couple blocks away, gave away six air conditioners that I take and I use at my rental and my dad's rental because inevitably one breaks and we have them. And this week it's just as hot. It was a hundred degrees here. People are like, do you have air conditioners? No. I mean, you know, this is going to happen. There's going to be 10 or 15 really hot days in the summer. You gotta, you gotta have this. Now I have central air and I, I, I didn't exactly know how to make it work, but we kept it at 74 and it seemed to do okay. So we were at 74 all day, which is fine. It was fine for me. And again, you stay cool. You do, like you said, you stay in the coolest room. Fans are excellent to move the air. Um, if you're doing the ice thing, you know, like put the bag of ice in front of the fan and let it blow. But anyway, you had air conditioning. So I guess my one recommendation is start looking for one. I mean, you don't have to get a portable one, but put one in the window or whatever it is, just in the bedroom. It'll be okay. Now, the electric is a different story. But the good news is, is that the weather breaks. Your weather is breaking. My weather is breaking soon enough. And we'll be back to normal temperatures soon. So 
Uh, kind of maybe yeah, it's one of my friends mentioned maybe it's the the weird situation of we we literally just went through like three and a half days of the hottest worst weather seattle has seen in decades uh to like bad but like it's it's been 81 here and it actually feels kind of chilly uh, it's kind of ridiculous so i do have two more non-ac tips for you number one a bucket that you can put your feet in fill that guy with water just soak your feet like you can be watching tv playing video games I'm literally at work like i i was sitting at my my work desk here in my apartment because i'm still working from home and chill my feet in a bucket of water and that did a surprising amount to stave off the heat that and you take a towel you get it damp throw it in the freezer let it sit there for about 15 minutes and just drape that guy around the back of your neck. It is, it is amazing. Seriously, I, I did not know these beat the heat tips until my wife informed me because I just don't pay attention. Uh, and yeah, day difference. It was, it was amazing. I mean, dare I ask, could you have gone into work? Uh, I could have. The issue is I take the bus to work and buses don't really have a great air conditioning system and they were uh, they were limiting rides and limiting how often they would ship people out. So yeah, I could have stood around and waited 30 minutes outside in 109 degrees to catch a bus without great AC while wearing a mask because there's still COVID around. Uh, to get to the office to hopefully spend seven hours inside with AC. Uh, but that also doesn't help my wife or my pet rabbit. So no. I bring the rabbit into work because people bring dogs to work and dogs and rabbits typically don't get along too well. You know, prey animal and, and carnivore. So I mean, I would have got, I, I'm not, I don't have school right now, but we don't have AC in our classroom. So Anyway, that's why we're off in the summer. Anyway, let's let let's move on. I mean, let's first knock out the big elephant in the room. Windows 11. Are we doing it? Is it go to 11 or is it just the quest for more money? I think it's the quest for more money. I, I'm honestly kind of disappointed in Microsoft because they made this big stink about, oh no, we're, we're taking all of your data for Windows 10 because it's the last Windows and we're never going to release anything ever again. It is Windows 10 from here till the end of time. And a few years later, they're like, hey guys, Windows 11, huh? That sounds neat. So, And it sounds like it's not like five years down the road. It sounds like it's, it's less than two, three years. Yeah, like, I know. Like, don't, don't get me wrong. It's it's new tech and it's shiny and prettier, but I didn't see a reason to like. There were there were a few structural issues with Windows Seven, but it wasn't it wasn't bad. Like Windows Seven was great, frankly. Uh, Windows Ten less great, but it's gotten better. I mean, they can they do it stupid Apple things does. in my taskbar. I mean, why can't they do what Apple, Apple does? Call it some, uh, I don't know, pick a place in Redmond, or and <laughs> let's call random places. Microsoft has issues with naming. All it takes is looking at the Xbox product line to understand that they have no idea how names or marketing is supposed to work. Anyway, I, I, I don't understand why they couldn't do that. I mean, you want to do that? They They were talking about charging for features whatever it is again i most people buy computers with the new operating system on it i guess what they're realizing is people are staying staying with computers much longer these days so instead of every three years it's every six years and they're losing a significant amount of revenue i don't know i'm i'm in the OS. i'm in the mac ecosystem for the foreseeable future uh so you want to get Windows 11? Sure thing. I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it's nothing really to worry about. For the average person, it's not going to be a huge change. But it's just, why? Like, like why? Like, I don't Seems know. Seems unnecessary to me. Uh, oh. it, I don't know. I'm a Linux on the desktop user, so I'm broken by default. Uh, but I, I do have a, a couple Windows 10 machines floating around. They're mostly gaming rigs, so... As it continues to play video games, that solves my use case. 
And then the next elephant in the room is John McAfee. He was the McAfee virus scan person. He's crazy, like certifiably nuts, but he he was really, really smart. He was found dead in a Spanish jail last week. Um, I guess he was he was convicted on tax evasion charges in the U.S. and they were going to send him back. And he committed suicide? Question mark. I don't know. This is the same guy who said he can break Apple's encryption in seven days, or or he will eat a shoe. The shoe never happened. He killed his neighbor's dog. I think. I think that was the story. Or he killed his neighbor. I don't allegedly, know. Allegedly, allegedly uh, ever- killed his neighbor. There's a whole lot of crazy wrapped up in that package. Like it's he's crazy. So. Uh, let's not diminish the fact that he's the antivirus person and for all that, but the guy was, the guy is nuts. And unfortunately he committed suicide. He passed, but he was a legend in the information security community. So I I don't know if we want to pour one out for him, but I don't know. Let's move on. I've got very, very (laughs) mixed feelings about it too. I I think everybody has got really mixed feelings around this. Uh, Um, if he has any next of kin who who had to deal with him, I I I, I thoughts and prayers to them. If, so let's move on from there. All right, main story. If you have a Western Digital My Book Drive, stop the podcast, stop listening right now. Well, not right now. Unplug it and then come back. Just unplug it for now. Come back. We'll explain why. But essentially, uh, there's a remote to a wipe- network. Hooked to a network. If you oh, have okay. just one of the standalone units that plugs in through USB to your computer, you're probably fine. So why don't you take over from here then? Um, yeah, Western Digital had uh, had kind of a bad week, um, and and by bad week, I'm I'm putting it extremely lightly. Um, Western Digital had. Uh, basically like a smaller consumer NAS type product with the MyBooks that you can hook to the internet and it like has file shares on your local network and you can manage it through the internet, right? Like it had a lot of, a lot of nice to have cloudy features to it. Um, unfortunately, Western Digital stopped supporting this in 2015. Like it's, it's already an old device, but it's a spinning metal hard drive. They do die, but, uh, significant amount of people uh, apparently uh, about uh, 50,000 of these still exist on the net hooked up to things um yeah it it ran out of support it was a known vulnerability in 2008 that um you could leverage a php script and pass in special shell characters and uh, basically do remote code execution on the device it's it's a seriously bad bug but forget what's plugged in and turned on um actually, well, let's, let's say with- this well, I will, let's say this if you have a western i had a couple not these specific ones i had the ones that you plugged in from back in my college days my dad has one they were real they're really nice devices they're spiffy looking they turned on with the computer now mine are connected directly um they had a little gauge on them they were really nice let's say kudos to them for having drives that lasted this long but but yeah, they did issue things end of life in twenty um, twenty fifteen. They said, and they found the bug in twenty eighteen. So they're saying this is six years old. You should not be running a hard drive that's six years old. But like you said, and like I have, and everyone else has, it was working. If it's not broken, we're not going to fix it. No one wants to fix things that are not broken. So with that said, people were running it, and these are where the problems came. Uh, unfortunately. Because these devices were end of life, because there's an actively exploitable vulnerability, which people have written about in the past, right? The my books are exploitable through this this PHP shellcode vulnerability. It's out that there was another vulnerability that uh, is now coming to light in a really, really public and awful way. It turns out when Western Digital was removing some some authentication code because they were end of life in these devices, they wanted to make sure, you know, it's it's basically as disconnected from their infrastructure as it could get. They left a block of code commented out, checked for authentication. And it basically made sure that they're authenticated as the owner. When you combine the previous vulnerability of being able to issue remote commands on this device as the user that runs that web service, 
combined with this new vulnerability where yeah, it doesn't actually authenticate certain parameters. Um, and you get this where random drive-by hackers can introduce new malware and then wipe your device. So, you know, to, to bury the lead here, um, a ton, like tens of thousands of these Western Digital My Books that were still hooked up, they were still running, they still had people's data on them, have been remotely wiped by hackers. Uh, we're going to get into exactly the, the type of wipe um, and what Western Digital is doing to it. But basically what this means is that your device, your hard drive was, you know, sitting on a desk somewhere or in an entertainment center, chilling. It's got all your data on it. Maybe it's a backup drive. Maybe it's a media server. And you wake up the next morning and all your stuff is just gone. It's just gone. It's a brand new factory reset device. And you did nothing except let it sit there. And I think that's, that's worse than accidentally like a power surge or something else. I mean, I would... At least, at least with the power surge, you would know, right? Like, you would know, oh, hey, something happened. My house lost power. Oh, no, my hard drive died. Like, it's a really easy sequence of events. We're going to have people, you know, discovering this for weeks, if not months in the future. And the problem is, is that and we're going to talk about Western Digital's response, which was good, except for the fact that you lost your data, and and that's not necessarily coming back, and and that's a problem because as much as we say backup, 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 the uh, I guess we call it victim blaming, telling them that it's their fault, it's not their fault. They did everything they were supposed to do, especially if it was a backup drive, and and to say, well, you should have known, you should be reading the CVE reports, you should be reading your emails and checking. No, it's not that. It's they literally, it's. I don't think the people did anything wrong. It was bad implementation. It's nobody's real fault. I don't want to say it's not Western Digital's fault, but it's it's one of those whose real fault is it? Western Digital will pay some. I'm, I'm sure they'll get sued and they'll lose out, but but your data is still lost. So why don't we get into what uh, happened? Oh. Because Western Digital flagged these devices as end of life, they said, hey, they're out of support. We're no longer providing firmware fixes. When this 2018 vulnerability came out, it didn't do anything, right? And I don't want to say that like all companies have to support all devices for all times and you can't ever get out of it. If you sell me a device, you have to support it for the lifetime of me, the consumer. That's, that's ridiculous. No one's going to say that. At the same time also had a really bad patch which allowed this device to not only be exploited which it was going to be exploited right because it had a previous vulnerability but then introduced a new zero day vulnerability which people weren't aware of until they woke up and their data's gone like that that is clearly their fault and i, I don't want to like don't want to say they're evil they're bad at their jobs they're incompetent right this is a bug they they made a mistake here but it's not Regis, say. I mean, leaving authentication code commented out, it is egregious, right? But it's a simple mistake, it's an honest mistake. It's not like they were malicious. It's just kind of view it the same way you view a car accident, right? Like it's unfortunate. It is somebody is at fault for not driving appropriately, but. I, it happens, right? Like, I, I don't want to completely blast Western Digital, but at the same time, I also don't want to defend them because it's their product, it's their code. They clearly caused this turmoil. Um, it's it's difficult, right? Oh, so so we're, we have a timeline of events of it's 2015 that that's the last firmware. So this device is from 2015. Assumingly, and and I recommend this on all your products, registering your product, whatever it is, is always a good idea. Um, I'm assuming they found this out in 2018, and I, I, it sounds like they 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 emailed people. They did say, "Hey, we found this," but you're saying 2018 from 2015 to 2018. That's three years old out of out of uh, firmware updates. So if you bought this, let's say in 2010 or 2012 or whatever it is, you're talking, it's three years out of the warranty and everything else. And, and I have a feeling that it looks like all signs point to, they, they, they emailed their users to say, Hey, we found this, uh, 
maybe you want to disconnect it from the internet. But I... I, I don't think there was a solution to this. So yes, the, from the coding side, like you said, this is terrible. This is really their fault and everything else. From the PR side, I, I, it's it's like you, you can't really support it for how long are you going to support it? Because if you say 10 years, something's going to happen at year 11. And so you have to cut it off and make a business decision and that's it. And... If you're if you're Western Digital and it maybe like maybe Western Digital could have said, okay, we're going to remove all remote capabilities and just make this a dumb USB hard drive. Well, if they push a fix that intentionally ruins or removes features of the device. You can't win that way either. Not only are you going to make users mad, but Sony famously with the PlayStation 3 removed the ability to install Linux. And they were sued successfully by consumers for intentionally dumbing down the device that people bought. Like, it's, it's kind of one of those, you, you lose either way. It's a rock in a hard place. So what do you do as Western Digital here? Uh, and this is where their response comes in, right? So Western Digital on their forums, on Twitter, on social media, on, on Ars Technica, which we'll link in the show notes, right? They're getting blasted left and right saying, oh my God, I've lost all of my data. I had this thing plugged in. It was there yesterday. It's not there today. What happened? And people start, you know, reconstructing log files and figuring out, oh, it's like somebody got in with this vulnerability from 2018, and then they leveraged, you know, a brand new piece of malware that they built specifically to uh, execute wipe commands or factory reset commands on these devices, which did a quick format on the hard drive, bring all your data. Or references to all your data which we'll get into here in a bit because your data isn't necessarily destroyed it's just inaccessible but we'll for that here in a minute western digital is now doing and this is an update as of yesterday that's uh july 29th 2021 at about 9 p.m from uh from Ars technica sounding um western digital provided really gory technical details it, they said okay in this script at this location using this framework with these variables this thing happened like it is an in-depth food forward analysis of how this thing fell apart and frankly that should be commended it's, it's honestly really impressive to be able to look down this list and see look there's the code there's the authentication stuff that was commented out they came out and said plain and simple this is exactly what happened on a purely technical level in gory, awful details. And frankly, that is something that I want to see more of in these root cause analyses. There's, there is no better way of learning tech stuff than either, like the first best way is blowing it up yourself, which I've done several times. I am not without blame. I have taken down production more times than I can count. Just, it comes with the territory of working in this field. Um, what you don't see a lot of is people saying, we blew something up real bad. Here is exactly how we did it and exactly how we're going to get out of it. Great, because I can read this stuff in, in Western Digital's you know, code and say, now I know what not to do, right? So sometimes you know, the second best way to learn, if you're not going to blow it up yourself, but the second best way to learn is watch somebody else blow it up and don't do the thing they did to make it explode. It's it's a great learning opportunity, and frankly, this should be applauded. So be, beyond now, the tech RCA, what they are doing is they said that consumers can trade in their devices for a brand new one with full support, like brand new top of the line MyBook model uh, or, or MyCloud model, um, which is which is great, right? They're they're giving people something for free. They're going above and beyond. But even beyond that, they said, hey you wanted to send in your devices we will attempt to recover your data they're not offering guarantees but they said you know we we will try to do data recovery for you on your devices on your behalf fantastic uh, a it's going to be super expensive b there's a lot of these devices and c out of support so like i'm sure they're going to get sued but by the letter of their contract, they don't have to do anything, right? Like, yes, their bug. He, there's nothing in the contract specifying that they're going to recover your data. I, I think they're responding to this above and beyond. I mean, yeah, it was a, a really, really awful mistake with really bad repercussions, but doing everything they can to make it right, and that's great. 
just remember how the legal system works. So you're going to, they're going to get sued. I'm sure they're going to get sued. And their job is to protect the interests of the company. They don't want to pay out. So they're going to say everything and it's going to sound terrible. It's going to be like, well, it's been three years. It's out of warranty. We have no, we have no like duty to fix this. So if you're one of those people and you're going to go down the lawsuit route, remember, I don't, it's bad, but I don't think you have a leg to stand on in, in this case. So by them offering you this and by trying to get your data back, um, that's probably, unfortunately, the best you're going to get, which if it works, that's all that matters. If, if you're able to send your drive back and they're able to send you something, uh, able to get your data back that that's a win-win for you if if they can't get it back i mean there's nothing unfortunately we can we can tell you we don't want to say it's there's no way to say that it's the victim's fault for not double backing up hey you bought this drive we've been telling people to buy one of these drives to back up and oh cool it has a really nifty feature that you can uh, get it from the cloud Nowhere did it say, oh, yes, and you have to read the warranty. You have to always check the firmware. You have to you have to do monthly maintenance on this, which is a whole different thing. But but hope that you can get it back. Um, again, uh, this is our this is one of the this is one of the reasons why we harp so hard on automatic updates and, you know, uh, user free upgrades, right? Where where the user doesn't have to do anything and their device just manages itself uh, because if you're going to go down the route of arguing that, well, Western Digital is in the right because these users should have known that their their hard drive hooked up to a network could have had vulnerabilities. It's like, okay, if you're a tech person who understands IoT and embedded devices and how firmware works and patches and CVEs, of course that's apparent. If you're just some person who wants to put, like, your home movies and family pictures on a networked hard drive so you can like show it on computers or keep active backups or whatever I expect normal everyday people to know this stuff right like at some point it it becomes onerous to blame the victim because you have to have an amount of technical knowledge when it comes to this stuff and it's not like knowledge how like i have mechanical knowledge i know i need to put cars or gasoline in my car a specialized technical knowledge of hey do you know how to how to change your oil and hey you know what probably watch a youtube video but i i don't just i don't do that i i pay a guy to do that for me <laughs> i mean i've been starting to look at this now so we, we've talked on the show how i did a free nas system many years ago and now i have synology and and we haven't t talked about the QNAP issue. QNAP is another Synology-based type product, network attached storage. They've been having real problems of people getting in and exploiting it. But anyway, before it's, I'm not saying this is the right or wrong answer, but maybe it's start it, to start looking at, instead of local backups, just buy one in the cloud, whether that's Google Drive or Dropbox or, or OneDrive or whatever else. And it'll end up being a little more expensive, but one of these, let's say Western Digital My Books is probably $300. I mean, for $300, you get two years of, uh, of Dropbox space with six other people. So ask yourself, maybe I'll pay a little bit more, but this will hopefully never happen again. And it's not... And yeah, we're hoping it never happens to you or happens again. But if Dropbox goes down or or OneDrive or Google Drive or AWS or iCloud, there are way bigger problems that if all of a sudden they lost a lot of data because they're 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 backing up and doing that. So maybe now maybe now the recommendation is move maybe start moving to the cloud and find something there. So maybe if you're storing movies, that's one thing. But I don't know. I feel like the price now is is much better to start moving if you were going to. And, and keep in mind, like I I have I have absolutely been in the seat where I've made the arguments and said, why why on earth would I pay for someone to store this data on this hard drive brick sitting on my desk right now when I could buy this guy for so much cheaper and store it myself? The, the easy answer is that. You going to self-manage backups and firmware patches and make sure the temperature stays 
perfectly in line in that that happy area and then are you going to like pay attention to vendor slas and end of life notifications and like it's it's quite literally a full-time job to run your system like data center or cloud operators would right like there's there's a reason why something like dropbox or onedrive is going to be more expensive and it's quite literally because they're paying people and i apologize for my phone they're paying people to handle that hard work for you so you don't have to it's quite literally you're being you're, you're paying for that convenience uh, is it worth it we're a my book owner kind of i mean if you're storing if you if you did what we said in the past, you have your local drive here for your time machine backups. You use Google Photos or some other photos service management system, or you have I, and you have multiple copies or whatever it is. Like on my hard drives, I have movies that that we bought and I digitized them for the kids to watch all throughout the house. So if we lost them, I mean, I own the copies. I can re-rip them. I mean, it's not the end of the world. The stuff I have backed up is is duplicated in more than one place, but. But if I lost it, it's not the end of the world. Um, it's just one of those. For me, it's having a lot of data nearby. Because again, we're we're assuming that everyone just has the internet bandwidth. It's not. That's the other thing. If you don't have the internet bandwidth, then that's a different problem. Anyway, there's not much more to say. I I, I don't know how to go back and there. We, there's no way we can recover your stuff. There's no way we can prevent this from happening again. There's no. We don't want to. There's no technical thing that's gonna that you that somebody did something wrong. It's just a bad thing, and and it's 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 our just public service to say start thinking if you have hard drives, start thinking about things like this, or maybe you want to move, or just here's your yearly reminder to think about your hard drives. And keep in mind that literally this is this is like a, an extremely rare event, right? Where where a hacker exploits. Uh, a 2018 bug, change that to a different zero day, and then factory resets and, and quick formats your device, right? Like, that's a whole lot of things in sequence that don't happen super often. You know what does happen super often? Discs die. Metal, SSD, uh, micro SD cards, flash drives, they all they are all consumable computing resources. So uh, if you are banking on one hard drive, uh, even, even if it's your backup drive, if you are banking on that one thing, perfect forever. Um, to assume that. They will die at the most inopportune times. I, I have been in rooms with people who are recovering their drive from backup, and it was like their computer was backing up to that drive perfectly for years that had a bad sector on a not well exercised area of the drive and when they went to recover their data the drive finished dying they didn't realize it but it was in an active like it will fall over any day now it just hasn't tripped hard enough to do that they go run recovery when they really need it and it blows up backups in more than one spot and on more than one device because where things are going to go wrong. So on, on the technical details, I know we're a little bit over time, but on the technical details of the wipe, this wasn't like an in-depth hard drive shredding, right? This wasn't like overwriting your data several times. What happened is the factory reset triggered a quick format where they literally just write new file system information over top of the old stuff to create a fresh partition. That does mean is that Data is still in there. It's not referenceable, right? Like, it's literally just it's like taking everything in your house and just putting it in a big pile on the street, right? It's not organized. You don't really know where things are. It could be under some other stuff. Like, you've got to go digging for that. So the good news around this data recovery effort is that there's potential for Western Digital to actually get things back, especially if it's well-known file formats. Like, photos that happen to be JPEGs. Well, they, they follow a very predictable series of, uh, of bytes and, and they've got you know, a very predictable data structure. They could possibly pull that back. Like folder structures and file names though that are stored in, in the actual file system architecture, not necessarily. So you might get your, your data back, but have it all be in that same pile. What about encrypted it's, stuff? Let's say your drive's encrypted. 
if it's encrypted, then when you hand your disk to Western Digital, they're not going to be able to get anything because it's all a jumble of of random uh, ones and zeros anyway. Like there's no marker for them to understand. Oh, this is a JPEG. This is an MP4. This is a, a Word doc. It's literally just nothing. But if you were using it in its default mode, yeah, there's a potential you could get some stuff back. But that's that's kind of the the gamble you take with uh, with encrypted drives is, hey, if it's busted or if you lose your key, it is gone. But that's a feature of encryption. It's not a bug. I'm just, and then the last question is, if uh, I my my opinion is, if Western Digital is offering recovery, take them up on it. Don't take, don't do anything in your hands. Turn off the drive, let it sit there. Um, and when they call, send it into them. Don't try and do it by yourself right now. Uh, maybe if they can't get it and you get it back, then maybe you try something else. If it's really that important, um, let them As be the first ones has, to touch it. Somebody who has done data recovery <laughs> efforts, it is really in the very best of cases. If you are trying to recover things on your own or migrating or formatting or doing anything to the drive except letting it sit there, you could be causing damage that makes files irreparable or irrecoverable. So leave it to Western Digital. They're the experts. Like You can hire your own data recovery people, but it, it gets expensive. My, my company has literally, uh, in my company, uh, a company, not my current company, a company I have worked for in the past has shelled out money to do data recovery on drives that died when I haven't been able to get stuff back with, with my limited knowledge and, and tools. It ain't cheap. So leave it to Western Digital, let them handle it, and don't, don't try to be a hero because you could really mess things up worse. I imagine it's like you're a doctor and you need to operate are you going to take take up the knife? No, you could cause way more damage than than a doctor. So Western Digital do the surgery. Well, okay, with that said, I'll just end it with any more questions. We have a signal group. Find us. Um, we're not that hard to find. Uh, and we'll get you in there. If not, we will see everyone next week. Stay cool. And I think next week. So we'll go with that. Have a nice day, everybody. Bye. Okay, I'm off.